Hi, good morning everyone from uh, here the countryside of Japan in Yamaguchi Prefecture. Check it out. Um, this is actually March 2nd and uh, we woke up to a little bit of snow. Quite frankly, we were not expecting much more snow anymore. And today I was actually gonna uh, fire up the grill and uh, cook some bratwurst and uh, some chicken wings, but I think we'll still be able to do that. We have some friends coming over, spend the night here in our little guest house. But uh, yeah, look at this. But while I'm at it, I want to just go ahead and let everyone know a couple of things are coming up. Uh, here shortly, uh, in about three weeks, we're going over to Omishima to visit the, the Benton Homestead folks. They uh, renovated an Akiya and turned it into an Air Airbnb. So please stay tuned for that. Uh, I think it'll be pretty interesting. And then, uh, third week of April, we're going to the Minka Summit 2024. This is the third year in a row that they have done it. This really, really cool event uh, where I say like 95% of the participants uh, or foreigners and not just Americans uh, I mean from all over the world quite frankly when we went the first time and it was uh, still kind of towards the end of COVID so in Japan was still kind of very much locked down and everything uh, many 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 foreigners uh, attended and uh, it's very very uh, a unique uh, event and experience of all those folks that are interested in uh, in uh, Kominka, Minka, Akia. Uh, so let me segue into that because here lately I've been getting a lot of uh, questions of people wanting to come to Japan from say from the States and other countries to come and look for their perfect Akiya and uh, here soon I'll be doing a video about it but I just want to touch on it real quick I guess there seems to be a lot a lot of uh, misinformation misconception and so on so so let me go ahead and tell you a little bit about our experience and uh, I mean, I have some experience because we did purchase this house right here, which was an Akiya. So bottom line is that, uh, let's go ahead and try to define what an Akiya is. An Akiya is basically, it kind of translates to a vacant house. So it doesn't necessarily give it an age or anything like that. It basically means that um, it is vacant. So it could be vacant for a day <laughs> and it's already uh, in Aki, I guess, right? No, I guess then from there you have different categories. You know, how bad are they? Um, have they been vacant for many, many years and well overgrown and uh, like, uh, like it was in this case right here with a lot of grass and everything? Or, or what? Is it still in pretty good condition? Uh, many times you still have the previous owner's uh, uh, property in there because they just don't want to deal with it or they probably died before they can get to it, whatever. And many other reasons why, right? And then there's like abandoned houses where they were straight up been abandoned. There's really no one to uh, claim ownership or they, uh, the, the parents, whatever, they died and the children, they just... Uh, uh, did not want to inherit the house so you can legally do that from what I understand it's in those many times fall in a different category because uh, now let's say the city or the prefecture or whatever they own it and you have to go through that uh, legal battle so I also get many questions of how can I how can I buy it or how can I find it well let me tell you what uh, you can find them anywhere <laughs> as a matter of fact here I'm in my uh, my I guess my uh, my carport right here and if you look behind those trees over there, uh, if you can see it, there's an Ikea right there. There's a vacant house, literally. There behind me where we just walked from, there's a couple other Ikeas that you can tell that no one lives there. And then they are not widely advertised, such as, uh, let's say, in the States that I can compare to, where you walk down the neighborhood and you literally see, you know, for sale signs, for sale signs, for sale signs. Here in Japan, they they do that, but not very much. Um, quite frankly, a house might be for sale and you don't even know about it. They have different websites and everything, but um, quite frankly, the websites are not uh, kind of what us, and I keep saying Americans because I am American, what we're used to, right? Where you have these beautiful um, uh, video tours and photo tours and you literally feel like you are there, right? And then you can find the, um, the exact address and you can kind of do a Google map search and kind of get a good idea of the neighborhood and all that type of stuff. You just don't have that. Uh, most likely you will not 
get the exact address because that is something that you have to coordinate with uh, the real estate agent to get an appointment to, and they will come and show you. Um, so there's, there's, it's just, it's just difficult. It's not, it's not as uh, cut and dry as we are accustomed to in, in the United States uh, and perhaps in other countries. Uh, and then also the motivation to sell a house is not very high because the price is not very high either. Uh, say for example, this house right here, we actually found it on the regular website. And uh, it was a family friend that was a real estate agent that was selling it for the family. Uh, and we paid approximately 35,000 uh, US dollars at the time, it was 4 million yen. And it had been vacant for uh, about five years. And if you have not uh, watched our previous videos, uh, please go back and do so. And uh, so basically we did a huge uh, uh, extensive renovation in the inside of this house. Okay, and also I want to talk about, uh, I guess the different other terms, right? So I touched on Nakia. Then also you have the term of Kominka and the Minka. A Kominka is an older Japanese house, let's say prior to World War II. So 1940s or so, that kind of falls into the Kominka and the, and the little bit of the Japanese language. Uh, the Kanji, the Chinese character for Ko is uh, basically old. And Minka is like a uh, family home or a farm home or country home, something like that. So a Kominka would be a, let's say an old Japanese house in the countryside. And then you have the other term, which is uh, Minka and basically like a, uh, like a farm home or something like that. So this would probably more fall into the category of a Minka because it was built in 1975. It still has the traditional um, Japanese characters such as uh, you know, tatami rooms and uh, engawa and uh, rama and, and uh, all that type of stuff. Uh, however, we did uh, give it a touch of uh, so a little Western influence such as a uh, a wood burning fireplace and we added here on the outside you can see we added a pantry or so i have a really good subscriber that's been watching me for from the beginning uh it's it's much bigger than the pantry as you can see so he recommended that i call it a kitchen annex and i really do like that because it's kind of like an annex to the kitchen uh let's see what else do we do we uh we added a laundry room which is not very common in japan uh, usually they uh, dry their clothes outside and uh, let me see let me go ahead and make it around the house and I'll show you what I'm talking about and sorry about the rambling <laughs> I just got excited about this little snow and I came outside to take pictures and here I am but uh, so yeah so that's the that's the laundry room which makes life a little bit easier more convenient and the inside is very well insulated and it has a lot of modern features so uh, yeah please go back and check them out if you don't mind all right, folks, uh, if you like what you see, please hit subscribe, like, and share. And I need to get inside because my hands are freezing. And again, this was totally uh, unplanned. So, all right, folks, have a great day. Bye.